transformed from idea to reality. I'm talking about the launch tower that China copied from SpaceX. Now it's done. China's biggest ambition may be to surpass SpaceX, but is it really that easy? Their tower design seems to carry significant risks, and their copycat efforts won't stop there. However, U.S. space is also making progress with their rocket in Connecticut. Let's dive into these updates in today's episode from NR Studio. In the previous episode, I discussed Cosmo Leop's ambitious plan to replicate SpaceX's innovative Starship launch arrestor tower system. Since then, the company has taken significant steps, securing funding to support the development of their own launch tower and rocket Leap, also known as U-Hen. Now that vision has gone from concept to reality. Recently, a video shared on the X platform showed China's completed launch tower, which mirrors the design Cosmo Leo once presented in a 3D concept animation. It could be China's most accurate replication of SpaceX's system to date. Like the SpaceX tower, the structure features a modular steel frame, as well as a chopstick system designed to lift, lower, open, close, and rotate around the booster, nearly identical to the SpaceX setup. At first glance, the tower's resemblance to the SpaceX design might raise questions about its authenticity. However, it is entirely real. Cosmo Leop has affirmed multiple significant technical advancements in previous funding reports, encompassing a verification platform for chopstick clip tower recovery and a flight control computer designated as Firestone No. 1, as well as China's first domestically manufactured tower recovery controller, Little Firestone. Cosmo Leop's rapid progress is striking, especially considering that the company, formerly known as the Hang Yu Hian, was only founded in March of this year. Reaching this stage of development in just a few months is unprecedented, highlighting the efficiency and speed of China's replication approach to aerospace. With the completion of the tower structure, Cosmo Leop will likely redirect its efforts and resources to completing other critical subsystems. These include the launch mount, which secures the rocket before launch, and the tank farm, which will provide the rocket with fuel and propellant. As such, development on the LEAP rocket is expected to accelerate. If Cosmo Leop continues to maintain its current pace, a test launch and landing could be possible as early as next year. China's aerospace sector and companies like Cosmo Leop in particular receive significant government support. This support allows them to move forward without the environmental or public safety constraints that often slow down companies in the U.S. The freedom from strict oversight allows for rapid, unfettered development at an impressive pace. Whatever the case, SpaceX, as a leader in the global aerospace industry, has been the center of attention for copycats, particularly in sustainability and cost-cutting efforts. Beyond Cosmo Leo, many Chinese rockets from private companies and state-owned organizations show SpaceX's influence in their designs most notably the latest version of the Long March rocket family. This trend aligns with analysis from Polaris Dawn Mission Commander Jared Isaacman, who tweeted about the strategic importance of SpaceX's progress. He noted that Starship's rapid reusability and other features, such as in-orbit refueling, represent a revolutionary leap in spaceflight capabilities. Isaacman noted the strategic significance of elevated terrain, highlighting the importance of these advancements across military, economic, and exploratory domains. He stressed that these developments cannot be ignored, either for the United States or certainly for China. These rising dynamics pose significant concerns for the U.S. aerospace sector. China's government-driven model has enabled rapid progress, while the regulatory environment in the U.S. can act as a drag on momentum. In particular, cumbersome government procedures and excessive layers of oversight often cause delays. Chief among these obstacles is the Federal Aviation Administration, the agency responsible for licensing rocket launches in the U.S. This detailed review, investigation, and assessment process can take months. Additionally, environmental agencies often intervene under the guise of environmental protection, a legitimate priority but one that can sometimes override the strategic and competitive value of rapidly advancing aircraft. SpaceX has faced a number of regulatory challenges, most notably related to its Starship project. The delays leading up to flights two and five serve as a reminder of these hurdles. Ironically, after finally approving flight five, regulators acknowledged errors in their previous assessment of SpaceX's processes, 
admitting a lack of clarity may have contributed to unnecessary delays in progress. This illustrates the extent to which the regulatory landscape in the U.S. can hamper progress, while other countries are able to make rapid strides in similar technologies. Despite the obstacles, SpaceX has made remarkable progress. In a year and a half across five test flights, they have achieved a number of significant milestones, including the first vertical landing for Starship and the capture of a super heavy booster using a Mechazilla arm. However, to meet the upcoming milestones, such as the Armas 3 lunar mission in 2026 and the Mars colonization mission that follows, SpaceX will need to further increase its development and launch frequency. Reforming agencies like the FAA to streamline processes and reduce delays could play a crucial role in accelerating SpaceX's timeline. If you agree that aerospace innovation in the U.S. needs to be prioritized, please leave a comment, let SpaceX fly, and share your thoughts. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on SpaceX's exciting journey toward a future where humanity can explore new frontiers in space. When we consider the technological aspect, it's clear that China's attempts to replicate SpaceX's innovation will fall short. The inadequacies in external design do not reflect the underlying technology, a gap that is evident in the launch tower system recently revealed by Cosmoleaps. First of all, the Cosmoleaps chopper arm structure appears unbalanced. The longer arm compared to SpaceX's makes it heavier and increases operational risk. Secondly, these appendages are accompanied by a medium lift rocket approximately the dimensions of a Falcon 9, presenting a discrepancy with the substantial configuration. In addition, their launch tower appears low and does not have a launch pad underneath, which could complicate tasks such as stacking and launching. However, the most concerning factor is the location of the tower. Based on the video, the Cosmoleaps Tower is built at an alarming distance from residential buildings. This follows a common pattern in China's aerospace strategy, where facilities are often built far inland and close to residential areas, an approach that has been widely criticized for safety concerns. China has had several incidents in which rockets have come dangerously close to residential areas. Earlier this year, for example, a Long March 2C booster crashed near a densely populated area, releasing toxic gases. More recently, a failed test of a Tianlong-3 rocket resulted in significant vibrations that were felt in residential areas, even from a considerable distance away. While reports from China often state that no injuries occurred, the risks posed by these incidents remain high. With the new Cosmo Leaps launching so close to residential areas, potential hazards such as vibrations, fuel vaporization, debris, or even a catastrophic explosion could pose a serious threat to public safety. The question then becomes, how will the Cosmo Leaps expand its infrastructure into densely populated areas? Destroying neighboring zones is not a viable long-term plan. Instead, SpaceX is placing its star-based launch towers in remote areas along the southern Texas coast, far from large populations. However, they have consistently faced regulatory delays from U.S. government agencies. Had the Cosmoleap Tower been subject to similar U.S. safety and regulatory standards, it likely would never have been approved for use. Marking Cosmo Leap's rapid and risky growth highlights the stark contrast between their approach and SpaceX's model of sustained regulatory expansion. Chinese companies may be growing rapidly, but without a solid foundation and long-term adherence to safety standards, they risk significant failure. Such incidents can erode investor confidence, potentially causing projects and even entire companies to collapse at the same rate they grew. In essence, this is the fundamental reason these imitators are impossible to eclipse SpaceX. Nevertheless, their ambitions remain. In addition to the Cosmo Leap development, another Chinese company, CAS Space, is also moving forward with its own rocket development. At 11.03 p.m. UTC or 6.03 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on November 10th, CAS Space conducted the launch of its Kinetica 1, or Legion 1, rocket from the Guchuan Satellite Launch Center, successfully placing 15 satellites into orbit, including the Jinlin-1 satellite for Changguang Satellite Technology, CGST. The launch took place at the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Test Site, which is dedicated to Chinese commercial aerospace companies, many of which are modeled after SpaceX. 
The launch marks Kinetica One's third mission this year and its fifth since its introduction in July 2022. Kinetica One, towering at 30 meters and boasting a diameter of 2.65 meters, is propelled by a solid rocket engine that generates an impressive liftoff thrust of 135 tons, enabling it to transport payloads of up to 1.5 tons to a 500-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit. The series of launches is part of CAS Space's preparations to transition to Connecticut 2 in late September 2025, with enhanced capabilities that include the ability to lift 7.8 tons to SSO and 12 tons to low Earth orbit. By late 2026, the company aims to achieve full reusability for Connecticut 2, likely adopting a Falcon 9-like mesh wing and landing legs, and potentially using methane fuel like SpaceX's Starship. The ultimate goal is Connecticut 3, which will be capable of launching 20 tons to SSO and be fully reusable. CAS Space is enhancing its launch cadence and aims to conduct between 5 to 8 flights each year once Connecticut 2 becomes operational with aspirations to expand its clientele to international markets subsequently. Despite these ambitious plans, attempts to emulate SpaceX's approach have failed. Time will tell what lies ahead for CAS Space, Cosmolab, and other ambitious imitators in China's space sector. That's it for today's episode. See you next time.